Welcome to Try This at Home. I'm Cliff Bumgardner. Ugh, I'm still Harrison Stewart. That's still Vibe true. into that theme song. I love it. Vibe into that theme song this week. They're, 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 who, who's that by, Cliff? Breakmaster Cylinder. The mysterious yes. Breakmaster oh, Cylinder. I've heard that. They I've are fantastic. Them. Check them out. This week we are talking about Mythbusters Season 1, Episode 12. Our myths are Explosive Decompression, Frog Giggin', and rear axle this episode first aired on sunday january 11th 2004 we've made it to 2004 here we are we are out of 2003 for the first time on the show it's pretty cool it is directed as always by peter reese and this is the second of our two episodes this season listing andrew farrell as a writer we well, talked well, well. we talked about him a couple of weeks ago with the uh, stinky car raccoon rocket oh, yeah. episodes and, yeah. and how he seemed to and we we think make an impact on the show because that episode felt so much better and i i felt some of that this week two for two mr farrell well I know, done i know well I'll, done i'd love to know it's only it's his only two episodes where he gets a credit but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the only two things he did so That's true. i'd love to know what his his influence was on the show cuz it i i think we're feeling it it really I'm, seems like it. I'm definitely feeling it. This is a great episode. Yeah. So we hop in overall thoughts. What did you think of this episode? I, the main reason that I like it is to me, it, it is like the strongest forecast of Mythbusters to come, mm. you know, like there's a, there, there's a pretty specific theme to the episode. They are things that not only am I genuinely interested in, the answer shocked me on all three. Oh yeah. Like I was like that can't whoa or or yeah i'm pretty sure that's true that's not okay well feel a little safer when was the last time you said that cliff i know feel a little safer well it's funny that you say that the results were were shocking this oh am i just stupid no 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 no. (laughs) this i think this episode explosive decompression that myth in particular is is a very famous mythbusters myth and completely unrelated to this show just because I'm a nerd in all aspects of my life, I was recently reading a book by Mary Roach, the science writer, who's so fantastic. And in the middle of that book, she references their explosive decompression test from this episode. She mentions like, yeah, well, as we know on Mythbusters, this and this and this. And I was like, what? It's famous. I didn't expect to see it crossing over like that. So, you know, in a New York Times bestseller, they're referencing this episode. So it obviously had some had some Mm. legs. I, Perhaps that's why it's a New York Times best. No, I'm sure she's very talented. <laughs> I think my favorite thing about this episode, and you you mentioned the theme, so I'm, I'm curious mm-hmm. if this is what you were responding to, is the testing Hollywood reality frame Yay! that's around the episode. Yeah. We haven't really seen that yet on the show so nope. far, but it's something that I remember as being a huge part of Mythbusters and a big part of my personal fandom of Mythbusters. Yes. Because I was such a movie kid, and I've talked about in the past, like this show influenced me wanting to make movies and TV. Mm-hmm. And I think this was part of that, right? That showing you that comparison of is what we see in the movies possible. And then if not, how do the movies do it? Yeah. Is a whole cool extra behind the scenes kind of element that they would they would come back to a lot in Mythbusters, but we haven't seen it until this episode. And I loved that. Well, and I'm also interested to see because again, like we've talked a lot about how the show the show that we remember mm-hmm. versus what it actually is and was i again i'm pretty i don't know that i ever watched an episode live you know or like when it was released i was always, i was a rerun guy right so the, i remember a lot of them having to do with movies oh or, yeah or like i remember the comic book episode or episodes um the james bond you know like i i that I seem to remember it being a lot of that, but some of that could be that those episodes were just very popular because of the subject matter, so they got the most airtime on reruns. I also we'll see. I also wonder if over time, like it became more necessary for them to do stuff like that because these kinds of stories in the real explosion of the internet and social media, I feel like mm. changed. You mm. know, a lot of what we're seeing right now are kind are our versions of like folk tales slash I heard from someone who heard from someone who whatever mm-hmm. like well, I don't know what year it launched but we're not far from like Snopes being a thing where yeah. you could just google it and see if this happened and so 
you have to start getting into other forms of like mythology, like movies and comic books and television shows and all this kind of stuff. Hmm. I know that social media actually becomes a big part of the show in terms of these are like viral videos now that we're testing. And mm-hmm. like, it's almost like the mythology changed with the with the show and they had to keep up with it. So I wonder, we'll, we'll see as we go along if that's like part of how the show evolves into more of that Hollywood stuff. Now you say that, and I, I certainly agree for the most part, but one thing that I kind of realized in this episode is that a lot of the stuff that they're talking about, a lot of the myths that they're testing, I hear it. And, you know, they're like, in the late 90s, I'm like, ah, forever ago. <laughs> it's like, that was five years ago for them. Like, these are these are still new yeah. stories, you know? Yeah. Like, they, they are, for the most part, still reacting to, like, fairly semi still relevant stuff what was it there was a few episodes ago where they were reacting to something that was said to have happened like that year like it was incredibly uh, quick it was, it was the lightning oh yeah 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 the lightning yeah, yeah, yeah. story was like from 2003 so yeah you're right they they were responding to stuff you know pretty quickly one of the myths in this one that was fairly recent at the time is is also my one negative for this episode and oh. we'll, we'll really get into it okay but in the frog gigging story, yes. we get a whole new level of unsatisfying conclusions. <laughs> it is, it's, I love the myth. I'll, I'll agree. I'll I agree. love the test. I love the myth. The outfits. The outfits are great. Come on. The story is great. The conclusion is just unbelievably bad. They and I don't understand they it. They didn't have plausible yet. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get, get there. there. Myth one, explosive decompression. If you shoot a hole in an airplane at altitude, will the plane explosively decompress? Yes, final answer. (laughs) I know, that's exactly how it feels. Well, that is why I love that they set their benchmark early on this one. Yes. Talking about this is what we see in the movies. It's not, can a plane decompress in the air? Of course it can. It's not, if you blow a giant hole in the plane, will something bad happen? Of course it will. It is specifically a small hole leading to a massive explosion where people are sucked out of a tiny hole and the seats are, you know, blown out of the plane. And like that, they really early on set that up so that they could go where they were going to go and not lose us, which I feel like is a, is a great evolution for them because they have fallen in that pit in the past. And they, I thought they really avoided that on this one. Yes. So I actually remember this myth. Um, oh but, really? So remember back in the uh, gold? So I say gold member, the the Goldfinger episode. <laughs> yes. Although they should do an Austin Powers. They episode. should absolutely. That yeah, they're like, they did that. Can Mini Me actually use his <laughs> as a kickstand? <laughs> Let's they, find out. And they get the actor, and he's like, "No, I'm sorry." <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, myth busted. I don't know. We're going to have to get a buster on this one. <laughs> um, so, but I, I, for some reason, I associated it in my brain with, like, at the very end of Goldfinger, that's what happens. Mm-hmm. Bond shoots a window in the plane, and Ulrich Goldfinger, who is a rather large man, just goes like crazy, like a balloon, and just like flying all over the place. Yeah. And then gets sucked out that like teeny little hole, not even referenced. So my brain just like made up that that's what, like I remember the myth itself, but for some reason I was like, oh, they're testing it like in Goldfinger. It's like, I mean, yeah, kind of, but. Well, but you're not. But Con Air is, but is the one that they show the most. They show, that's what I was going to say. They show several different movies in that mm-hmm. kind of opening montage to just show, like, this is a lot. Like, yeah, it happens all the time. It doesn't surprise me that they didn't use Goldfinger because it's just, it's in so many different things. Yeah. You know, it's just, and they, they kind of did a similar version to what they did back with Ice Bullet. Where mm. they show in the setup to that myth, like in the opening of the of the show, they show a movie clip and, mm-hmm. like, and then they never come back to it. Yeah. And they kind of did that here. But I think this is so much more common of a of a story, like you said, that yeah. they didn't need to. It was kind of like, oh, yeah, I've seen that in a million different you movies. You have to have. Yeah. You have to have seen it. And also, like, people have a lot more experience with flying. Mm-hmm. And, like, this is something that I'm sure has been on their minds and they thought about. And Yeah. It was a great setup. Well, but it is so ubiquitous, so in your face that I was pretty convinced that like, well, it's got to be a thing. Yeah. You know, like it it wouldn't make sense for it to be referenced that often if this was just completely made up. 
it sits in that interesting space because I agree I had a similar reaction to it, but it realizing now as we're talking about it, it sits in that space where there are certain stories where it's very hard to pull the truth from all the versions of it that you've seen because mm-hmm. they, they do show in the episode, you know, planes that have had explosive incidents on board and have suffered decompression. Obviously yeah. that can happen with certain factors in my mind. I couldn't separate the real things I've seen <laughs> of planes with giant holes out of them yeah. from the movies, from the getting sucked out of it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of a perfect spot for a myth like this. We've talked about this so much this season of the true story versus the, you know, scientific reality of it. This is sitting perfectly in that spot for them to play with. It is. I I should also cop to the fact that I don't really understand momentum. You know, like <laughs> I, I I'm still of the opinion that if you jump on the top of a, a <laughs> like train, that you should just stop where you are. Well, we have a MythBusters episode for you, my oh, friend. I can't wait. That does happen. I think that's way later in the show. We're gonna be like 80 by the time we get there. But I think it does. <laughs> we happen. will get there. We will get there sooner or later. <laughs> I early on in this myth, I I just loved that. I mean, the the test is very straightforward, really, how yeah. they're gonna make this happen. But it's just such a the thrill of this test to me isn't the like the the complicated nature of it. It's just the scale of it and what they get to do. Mm-hmm. But one of the first things they do is they have to make a remote firing rig for a handgun. And I was watching it and like Jamie takes out this gear system and he's like, yeah, this is the what comes out of a drink machine and this is how and I'm going to do this. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm watching it and realized this isn't weird anymore. Mm-hmm. Like I just fully go, oh, yeah, he's going to make a remote firing rig for a gun out of a drink machine. I'm on. Of course he I'm is. on board. I'm yeah. on board. Of course yeah. he is. Yeah. No not? questions. Yeah. No notes. <laughs> moving on. Like it, we've already gotten to that point. Only, only yeah. you know, what, 12 episodes into the show. Yeah. We've gotten to that point of like, yeah, that's just what they do. Even, even the editor is desensitized. It's not like, yeah. No comments. Say that again, Jamie. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, none exactly. of that. They're just like. Yeah, I'm moving right along. Just normal stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's not even like a can he do it? It's just like and it's done. And it's done. <laughs> and 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 also no one goes a remote firing gun is one of the scariest things we can possibly imagine. Mm-hmm. Like of all the things we've seen on the show so far, that's probably one of the most dangerous. That that's definitely the one where you're like that is on our side. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I'm glad he's just like out of school in Finland these days yeah. and not hiding someplace waiting for his moment. Well, yeah. he still could. Perhaps he's hiding in Finland oh, in man. plain sight. Who knows? <laughs> we do know he, he could do crimes remotely, so why not? <laughs> well, and we're going to get there. He's actually going to talk about doing crimes pretty soon in this episode. Uh, they had a great uh, uh piece i loved here you were talking about the science of this and like mm-hmm. trying to figure out how these things work they did a really good with the schematic graphics and the blueprints showing how pressurizing of planes works and why it works yeah were you surprised at how i maybe maybe i don't have a great perspective on psi mm-hmm. but they said it was eight psi was the pressure differential from inside and outside of a plane mm-hmm. which was much lower than i thought it was the first place where I was kind of like, oh, maybe this isn't as explosive potentially as I imagined because Mm -hmm. we have already seen on the show and certainly in my memory on Mythbusters, like way more pressure, hundreds of pounds per square inch. And we've seen that that's what it takes to get the kinds of results that is kind of promised in the myth. I don't know. I was surprised by that early on. Well, and this is a strength of the show. It is for people like you that understand that and also for people like me where it's like okay and what is psi it's this okay thank you so much appreciate that (laughs) like i that didn't bother me but i don't know how much that is or if that's like a normal amount or it was just like oh okay i'll take your word on that and i feel like i only have that knowledge because of mythbusters (laughs) well it's certainly it's not not because of my liberal arts degree i'll tell you that (laughs) there was none of that in writing school I didn't have to learn any of that. 
Careful. We have to have a lot of liberal arts listeners. Well, I'm, well, I'm one of them, but I'm just saying. Oh, I me certainly... too. <laughs> Dang it! I would love to know the the you know the the mix of uh, of engineering and science kids who grew up on MythBusters, and then all mm. the art kids who grew up on MythBusters, because mm. it is kind of a perfect marriage of those two things. Of yes. like, that's kind of what special effects is. Is like, you know, science and and technology mixed with weird artsy i want to express my feelings on screen kind of stuff which yeah know, kind of perfect but again i i do think this is the first episode i can recall where it like brought to mind what they do what their day jobs are right when they were specifically like this worked or didn't work or you know whatever the outcome is how would we stage it right that was a fascinating you know perhaps later we'll see them actually execute on that but i love just hearing them like talk about it yeah you know again it, it they're wildly fascinating individuals i want as much of a peek into that brain the those brains as i can possibly get so i love hearing them like talk shop you know and just be like well how would you go about this well, x y and z and it's like oh yeah, yeah yeah but what if we treat it like this like oh it Good also stuff. speaks again to the scale of this particular test. They got mm. a DC nine passenger jet <laughs> that was under salvage, which was uh, like, I, you know, we've seen them struggle to get very basic items yes. about the show. And yes. I was like, Oh, right. The yeah. show is now they're on now. They, yeah. They got budget. They got contacts They They can just go get a sal, a sca, you know, a salvage jet when they, when they need one. Well, great. It, there was the narrow had some line like, most people's metric for success is having a private jet. <laughs> Theirs is being able to blow one up. Yes. And, and and then, so, okay, so they say private jet. So, like, they're kind of setting you up for, right. when I say private jet, Cliff, you have a size in mind yes. of this vehicle. You, you, you have an image, and it might be nice, but I wasn't imagining, like, a full just like jumbo jet yeah like that's it they get like a full plane I'd like hop in we're going to florida yeah, yeah. <laughs> crazy yeah i mean like and, and again like that it just shows how far the, the show has come in the first season where that's yeah. now what they're able to do is just do a test on a full size airplane it really added to i feel like even you know in the pilots especially this would have been they would have had, had to have done a scale version of this right we're gonna mm. make a pressurized box and test on that and then yeah. extrapolate it no they just have a plane now they just went and got a plane a I, whole ass plane did you notice during this sequence actually during this entire episode but especially during the part where they first go out in the hobby desert to this plane junkyard really mm -hmm. another just great location we've seen so many this season but just a great um you know, expanded Mythbusters universe kind of place once again. Did you notice that Adam was kind of dressed like Jamie through this whole sequence? I can't say that I did. He's wearing a white button down shirt and it just stuck with me because like we don't ever see Adam dressed like that. And, no. and the photos from this episode, I see them a lot when I'm lo like looking up stuff about Mythbusters for mm -hmm. the show. So I had seen it many times and been like, it's so weird that they're dressed alike. Well, it's even such a known fact that Jamie dresses a certain way. Adam has a joke about it later in this very episode. <laughs> and it made me realize we haven't really talked about that yet. Uh, uh, Their wardrobe? Throughout the show. They're kind of uniforms that uh -huh. the guys have. On the show. <gasps> Was this the first? Now, I did notice the, the, I know it's probably not a cowboy hat. I'm going to call it a cowboy <laughs> hat. You know the one I'm talking about. I think it's an Indiana Jones hat. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do that? <laughs> probably. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, wow. I didn't think about it like that. But is this the first episode that's in, or has it has it been there? I'm pretty sure we've seen it before. Okay, we've definitely seen the beret and the, like the Jamie uniform oh, ja has been locked from episode one. Pretty that much that was like, that was locked from from birth. Like he came <laughs> out like that. You know, like, the narrator will make a joke about them being big children. It's like, and little has changed except the mustaches. I don't even buy that. Nope. I don't. I don't buy you. Jamie Heineman has always had a mustache. I, yeah, from the womb. I don't even want to picture him without a mustache. Like sometimes Ooh. that's funny to Ooh. think about. No. I don't want it it kind of scares me, to be honest with me you. Me too. Me too. 
That and that's the real danger of AI. If it can produce that <laughs> image, you know, you know, we're it's, in trouble. It's not the workforce economy. It's <laughs> photos of Jamie Heineman without a mustache. That's what we really have to worry about. Finally, someone gets it. <laughs> uh, going back to the plane, they, they, they we like we said, it's amazing that they have this thing, but it is full of holes. Everything yeah. has been stripped out of it. They actually have to shore the plane up. Which worked much better than they than I thought. Like I really thought, oh, this is gonna be an ongoing thing. And really a couple of times it fails, but for the most part, it's like, no, we we actually are pretty good at making a giant aircraft <laughs> airtight Apparently. in an afternoon. I was like, wow, way to go, guys. All right. They brought in then a giant air compressor to pressurize the plane. Mm-hmm. Did you note what it was called? I can do this. Um the guffer? D- it is called a huffer. Huffer, that's it. That's which is it. not to be confused with a fluffer, which ah. is a different thing. Uh, Cliff, what is it now? <laughs> and they say huffer. Yes. I'm just going to be honest. They say huffer so many times in this episode. I snickered every time. Mm-hmm. I let out a little giggle. Me too. Because I am a 12-year-old boy at well, heart. Well, until they turned it on and it sounded like an air siren. Yeah. That, that, that was an air raid siren that, that i didn't like that at all yeah that thing is actually quite powerful and sort of terrifying apparently it's used to help start certain types of planes where mm-hmm. you need the air pressure i guess to get the engine spinning so that it can like pick up momentum or whatever so sure. this is like a ridiculously powerful machine with the silliest name it, i can imagine <laughs> off the top of my head i mean what would you call it <laughs> a blower <laughs> a blower <laughs> You know, that's better. That can't no, be... No, that's taken. Can't be Dang confused it. with anything. No, it's nothing sexual. When they do have one of the blowouts, one of the, the uh, cockpit windows blow out, this was actually... Oh, it's violent. It's violent, and it actually... There was, a, there was like a plastic bag on the seat, and they said it got sucked out through the hole. Yes. And it was like, oh, is this... That hole? That teeny hole? I did have a moment there of like, Oh, this is oh. gonna work. Mm. Like if that's what happened, but oh my god, this Me is too. gonna be really. This is really gonna be something. Me too. It was Me a too. nice little storytelling moment of like laying that you know that seed of doubt in there. I was like, what's gonna happen here? Yeah, I did think it was really funny that because um, we're almost at like the break, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had already seen this when it blows up. Adam runs over there and I was like, what happened? You know. <laughs> And then later they use that in the tease. Like, I noticed that is too. Is stuff going to go wrong? What happened? It's like, well, that's not going to happen. We just hour. saw that <laughs> yeah. like 15 minutes you ago. You can't fool me, editor. I know. I, I noticed that too. It's funny you called that out. I was like, oh, you're trying to be tricky. And it just doesn't work when you've already seen it. It only works when you do the ice road trucker thing. And yes. we haven't seen what's yes. going to happen yet. And it's a tease. This isn't a tease. For We've already seen it. Yeah. <laughs> They get to the first test actually pretty quickly, which I thought, I was like, oh, are they not going to do the hop around thing in this episode? Are they not going to leave this and come back? Mm -hmm. Actually really smart the way that they did it, but they get the first test in where they shoot the gun at the window. Like nothing happens, Mm -mm. which I was very surprised by. Buster is A-OK. Buster is fine. And they actually, I don't know that we've had this before with one of these bigger myths that they cut up in the episode where they call it busted right here. Yeah. They go like, well, we did the thing and it's it's busted, but what is it going to take? Yeah. And they immediately set that up very classic Mythbusters kind of thing and I thought it was, you know, we talked about I think it was back with the um Buried Alive episode mm-hmm. which you loved so much. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> and how like they had these great narrative moments that they just wasted by mm-hmm. just Going, yep, here's what happened. We'll, <laughs> yeah, we'll be right back. We're there gonna, it is. Now go look at some soda. You <laughs> yeah. know, like it was so weird. They've clearly learned from that. And yeah. here they're really teasing it out and stretching it out and using that those storytelling techniques. And again, it, the first place we saw this was the first Andrew Farrell episode. Mm-hmm. So I really wonder... Like what? Where was his voice in all this? You know, I I, I feel pretty confident in, in in saying that he at least had a hand in it. Because don't they? I, I'm pretty sure aren't two of the myths uh uh split up this time? Yeah, or is it only one? No, yeah, both yeah, yeah. both this and the next myth that we're about to get to are both split up, and and they come back to him across the episode. It's a big hold that thought episode. Exactly. But I love that. I mean, the fact that there was more of a thought to hold, and they gave you just enough. Yeah. You know, they're like, not that, but 
I mean, we've got a jumbo jet. We're going to blow her up. <laughs> You better believe. I'd be a terrible airplane designer because I'd look at that and I'd go, <laughs> yeah, like that's ever getting off the ground. So that actually brings us to myth two, rear axle. This is another Hollywood myth, an even more direct Hollywood myth from the movie American Graffiti, where uh, someone attaches a cable from the rear axle of a cop car to a telephone pole. So when the cops take off in pursuit of someone, the rear axle is cleanly ripped straight out of the car. And the myth is just simply, can that happen? Would that actually happen that way? And I think that's great. Like, I think it's 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 a great way to take something you know, American Graffiti, probably not the first movie I would think of. It's like, a, oh, let's pull something sciencey and weird for, no, for Mythbusters. Not at all. But it's kind of a nice setup because it it really, where this goes, gets into some interesting stuff of, of the engineering of the whole thing. <laughs> I was kind of amused that they don't bring up anything interesting about American Graffiti. It's like, oh, I know. Yeah. Oh, okay. And what is the fact about that movie? Yeah, it's a movie. Well, yeah, but like, who did it? Yeah, what's the only Some reason guy. people remember American <laughs> Graffiti? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like Harrison Ford and George Lucas. Exactly. I've actually never seen it. I don't. I, I've seen THX, but I have not. I've not seen American Graffiti. I think it's. Graffiti. I think it's been a long time, but I have. And yeah. I. And I. You know, you watch it because somebody goes, "Well, that was before." That Star was Wars. George Lucas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Exactly. They have to. Do get- you know about Zeropa? <laughs> They have to get what they call a cop car stunt double for this test. And the guys have a lot of fun driving that around. This yeah. was a nice little glimpse of all of the driving stuff that we will ultimately get to on the show. It was mm-hmm. funny to see that here because I know Adam Savage has said that over the course of the show, one of the real skills he picked up was stunt driving hmm. because they were trained by professional stunt drivers yeah. for a lot of their episodes and a lot of stuff that they did. And at this point, it's funny because there's actually a joke that Adam's not as good at doing burnouts in the cop car as Jamie <laughs> is. It was like, it's another one of those like, oh, boys, you don't know where you're going to go. Yeah. You know? <laughs> the places you'll go. They even show and it, I had a moment of like, why? Are they talking about this where they mm. show the back seat of the cop car with holes cut out so you can sit oh, yeah. in it with your hands cuffed behind your back? How interesting was that? Which is a weird mix of like thoughtful yeah, <laughs> and also imprisonment. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it kind of goes back to the like the Alcatraz, like we don't want you to be in here and be sick. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We want you to sit comfortably Come as on. we take your freedoms away. <laughs> yeah, like, whoa, yeah. That's oh, weird. Okay. But it does lead to what we alluded to earlier, where Jamie is sitting in the car with his hands behind his back and actually says, Now I know what it'll be like when I finally get arrested. <laughs> And I have to win, I, not well, if, but and then, the eventuality that they're going to get me. And that made me want to raise the question. What do you think his crime will be? Like, what do you think he would actually get put away for based on what we've seen so far? Um, uh, Like taking down the entire American infrastructure just to prove it can be done. Nobody goes to prison for that. What do you- yeah, you're. You know what? Actually, I take that back. You're exactly. exactly. No, he's, it's gonna be. It's gonna be like the scene in the Social Network where oh, yeah. they're, they're like the NSA is like, "What have you done?" And he's like, "Well, I just pointed out flaws in your system, didn't I?" <laughs> it's gonna be that. It's gonna be that. And and he did it with like a robot made from scavenged parts off of a drink machine. Well, and that's his real defense: is that I didn't do anything. The robot did. <laughs> He just invents like iRobot. Consciousness. <laughs> yeah, he, inv- he makes iRobot happen. Is basically what happens. Well, it took a couple days, but I finally cracked the whole soul thing. <laughs> I think we got evidence of that. And again, another thing that they kind of gloss over is that Jamie rigs an entire comp car for remote control using the electric motor off of a wheelchair. Off of a wheelchair. That's dope. And he just says it, and again, the show just goes like, yeah. Because yeah. that's the kind of thing that Jamie does. Yeah, absolutely. That's his weekends. No, why not? Why wouldn't he? Why would you not just be able to rig a remote control cop car? Didn't you, though, want to play with that remote control cop car? So bad. Oh, my God. It brought so out bad. that perfect mix of childish excitement over grown-up things. I did lose my mind <laughs> when they did Donuts. Yes. Uh, so, like, if I didn't think that there could, that you could add something to the inherent appeal of doing donuts, 
by removing the driver? Yeah. Yeah, that'll do it. And put it that'll in the car that can go wee woo wee woo and yes, I am yes. in. Yes, that's it. That's it. <laughs> I think I think isn't this what uh what Adam is like I checked. There's nothing more fun than this. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. He's right. I've looked. I I we Cliff did his research. It's true. There's nothing more fun. Yeah, there's nothing more fun. I tried Is to it? find it. It's just, it's, it turns out it's not out there. Top fun. Yeah. <laughs> they peaked in That's 2004. It. That's it. <laughs> with this Everything myth. has been not fun since. And I mean, they, in the, to the, uh, the great Mythbuster tradition of stuff we don't have to do. Mm-hmm. I love that they dress Buster in a police uniform and put him in the car because we talked about a few episodes ago. When is it going to get to the point where Buster is just an assumed character yes. and he's not just being used because they need to drop him or they need to do something He's really just there to be there, and because he's the other MythBuster, and we got it here. It's just we like, did. of course, Buster's going to be in the car. Well, and I love that Adam is like, he looks like he's in the Village People. That's <laughs> just such a great. On top of the fact that they're like definitely playing stripper music in addition. Like, oh yeah. Woo, woo. Oh yeah, they know. <laughs> yeah, so they good. so know. So good, and it's great. And let's be look. I ain't gonna knock Buster for having a side job. <laughs> However, you gotta make ends meet, buddy. That ain't none of my business. They did another. <laughs> All right, I'm done. They did another good setup here, though, because this is, you know, another fairly straightforward test. We're just gonna do it. Yeah. But again, they tee it up and then walk away for a bit and say to come yeah. back. I think that's our first twofer that mm. we've gotten. Like you said, of two myths that you're going to have to wait and see what's going to happen. Yeah, this is real inception. You're like, all right, hold that. We're going to level deeper. <laughs> Apart from the mustaches, these two haven't changed much since elementary school. Come on, it's my turn. What, you think I'm getting out of this thing? <laughs> <laughs> Not. Myth three. This one is called Frog Giggin, which is only the name because they wanted to say it. it there's cl- no... Cl- cliff, Cliff, Cliff. Are they wrong? Are they wrong, though? I guess technically not. I would submit they are not. I love saying it. Frog gig. So the idea of this myth, this comes from a story about a couple of guys, a couple of good old boys who had gone frog hunting, which is called frog gigging. Apparently. In the South, apparently. Yeah. And on the way back, their hunting truck uh, <laughs> blew a fuse, and they didn't have another fuse to put in it. So one of the guys realized they could use a twenty two caliber bullet which fit perfectly in the fuse box, but after I think it was about 20 miles, they said it heated up so much the bullet went off and actually shot one of the good old boys in the crotch, causing Aww. them to wreck. Well. Uh, and they made sure to say that the guys survived, yes. but that they uh, the guy needed surgery because of the of the bullet. So that's the question. Can you use a 22 caliber bullet as a fuse, and yes. what would happen if you did? But this entire time that they're setting it up, Adam... And Jamie are both dressed as truckers <laughs> and no attention is brought to it. No. They don't say like, oh, you look pretty good. And that no, they're just dressed that way. They're just that way. It it like down to the, <laughs> the, 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 the beret makes a lot more sense when you see Jamie in a ball cap. Yes. And you're yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. why is it only on top? Like, yes. There's the trucker like placing it on top, but it's more like it doesn't like he's got it flat against his head and it just doesn't come down far enough. Do you know what a strange human being you have to be to make a beret look more natural? If you look weirder when you're not wearing a beret, that may be a sign that you're a unique human being. I think so. And I love Jamie Heineman to death. I do, too. I respect the beret. Absolutely. I'm just saying. Absolutely. Wow. I, I know. I, Cliff, I don't even know that I can name another time where I was like, put the beret back on. Yeah, you could. this guy could really do with a beret right now. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine, but have you considered a beret? I will say he's not at the peak, though, because the peak would be, you know, you should really consider a fedora. Mm. We're not quite there yet. Not he yet. hasn't. There, There is a level above not yet. where Jamie's at, so I'll give him that much. I, I, please do. 
they gave a little bit of background in this uh, story that they say that the, the the they go to the folklorist who actually mentions a specific newspaper that supposedly published this in 1996 mm. called the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. <laughs> I mean, we haven't gotten that level of specificity before with the setup of a story, no. so I definitely had to look it up. And you, you can find online the actual article from 1996. What's interesting about the article, it is specifically reprinted by the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, which is a real paper, okay. to say, we never published this. So it is a contemporary story from 96 where they say, and I have a quote here, a frogging story that reportedly appeared in this newspaper is winding its way around the gro- globe like a chain letter, except the story didn't run in the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Oh, wow. And from all indications, it's not true. And so they actually then published, here's the article that people say comes came from us, and then they went through and fact-checked it. To say this well, story, kind of fun. this story didn't actually happen, which yeah, I thought was pretty cool. I am surprised that that didn't come up in the show. Well, they do mention they they, they did mention the the folklorist had a line about um, Dr. Uh, Joseph Witham had a line about the fact that the uh, paper had disputed, um, yeah, you know, uh, that they had ever published it. So oh, they, they okay, did okay, actually okay. mention my that bad, bad. just for a second. I must, I, I must have missed it. Well, but they didn't go into detail, and when I found the actual detail. There was a wonderful, a couple of wonderful things that were in there, which mm-hmm. shows you just how 1996 it was. Mm-hmm. They referred, they say that, uh, for all indications, the story is not true. That's not keeping it from circulating the internet. In fact, the computer network is pr- proving much speedier and far reaching than most chain letters. <laughs> The computer <laughs> network of the internet is proving to be quite speedy. Ah, did you know that this here uh, instant messaging is rather fast? <laughs> uh, well, I just can't think of what indication I would have had that that would be the case ahead of time. I thought that was so delightfully uh, mid-90s <laughs> that yeah. I just had to pull it, and it was great. But yeah, they, they did fact-check the story and find that uh, multiple things in it were wrong. There was actually a, I believe, a, a sheriff's deputy named in it who has never been a sheriff's deputy in that county. <laughs> they they really did do their research on it to try to find, and they, they can't find any, any truth to the story, which sets up the most interesting thing about this myth to me mm-hmm. is that it works perfectly. Like a charm and on the... F- for technically the second go. Yeah. And once they get it going, it is easily duplicable. I felt like we were right back in Bazis- B- Biscuit. <laughs> Biscuit Bazooka. Biscuit. Biscuit. Hell uh, yeah. <laughs> Biscuit Bazooka territory where it's like, oh, there's no proof for this. It didn't happen, blah, blah, blah. But here's this weird series of events that all seem to work perfectly the way that we said that they were going to. Like, yeah. Where would this come from if it, it didn't happened. actually happen? Yeah. Like I this, just watched you do it. This had to have actually, because nobody would have come up with this on their own. No, and and also, I don't know about you, but I was uh, shocked that they pull out the fuse box and they just they pop that puppy right in. And it bullet, fits perfectly, like a glove, Cliff, like a glove. I like it was designed for that purpose. I I was really weirded out. What I was not surprised by is when they had to test bullets, they did it indoors in M5 and used Jamie's old truck. We're, and put the cameraman in front. No, <laughs> and so he was behind glass. He was behind glass. Was yeah, fine. yeah. It was just like, of course. So again, we're back in, in biscuit territory where it's like, we're oh, we need to let's destroy Adam's car. We're now back in Biscuitville. In <laughs> Biscuitville. <laughs> now it's Jamie's turn. We're gonna just shoot some bullets in his car. NBD. Which honestly, the only surprising thing about that is that James Car doesn't already have that ability. <laughs> right. Which well, let's be real. It does. That's why he's working on it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it was in the shop. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> and like you said, the bullet fits perfectly in this fuse box that they mm. had gone and scavenged. It were, it's insane how, again, like why would why would anyone know that unless it had been done at some point? Yeah. Uh, they put Buster behind the wheel once again mm-hmm. to... to uh, Dressed as a trucker. Dressed as a trucker this time. Mm-hmm. He is really getting his, you know, his... His, co- his wardrobe changes. His potato head experience <laughs> across this episode. <laughs> and as you mentioned, they do one test. The bullet actually completes the circuit and cuts the headlights on. Which that in and of itself is... Insane. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
but it doesn't get hot enough to actually fire the bullet. And mm-hmm. so they think about, well, we need to cross a short. Yeah. And I, this is where I have to say, I had never before understood what a short really was until it was explained to me by the Mythbusters. You little brain. Yeah, no, me neither. <laughs> well, so uh, you know I was a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, I for sure didn't know this. Come on. It was like, like, great, though. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, a simple explanation, really well done. With a graph or a, 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 a visual aid? Yes, please. And it shows you so well. We talked about this a while ago about like the edu in the tainment mm-hmm. with, with, you know, this era of discovery with Mythbusters of like, you know, the human brain processes narratives better than anything else. So when yeah. you give someone a story and then you give them a piece of scientific information that helps tell that story, you retain it. And it's like, this is why I remember some of the stuff from childhood. It's why I can tell you how PSIs work from childhood. I never would have been able to do that. Mm. And we we talk all the time about the magic of this show. And I feel like that's part of it, man, is just the fact that they were able to educate you at the same time as they entertained you and that one helped the other and back and forth. It's just, it's special. Especially since I I find I, if I remember a myth at all, I do remember the outcome. Yeah. Like it's yeah. not just that oh I re- I remember that they tested this. It's like no, I I have in fact changed some things in my life around this information. <laughs> totally. Totally. I mean they, that's and and I think we we, we I will we, never walk in rain. I'm just not going to. It. it just feels wrong. <laughs> it does. Like it, it, I've, I I I did try it after after that episode. I was like, let's just see and I was like, nah. <laughs> And you mm-hmm. always wear your pink panties when you're getting in and out of the car at the gas station. Naturally. Something else you learned. What kind of heathen do you think I am? I, for one, have stopped pouring gasoline down my toilet. Well, that's just a shame. How, how are you even getting it clean? Oh, so you like a dirty toilet then, Cliff? That's yeah. just a bad man. You know, <laughs> dirty hippie over here. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Want to be good for the environment. Boo. <laughs> so they then actually rigged the car up to create a short by actually <laughs> causing a short from the battery <laughs> across the fuse box, which is intense. Yeah. And it's so intense that it just fries the wiring in the car. Just immediately <laughs> smoke coming up out of the hood. I didn't even know that could happen that fast. I know. I know. So that this is where, as you mentioned, they switched to a heavier gauge wire. And this time, bam, immediately. It's like they, they didn't... <laughs> They keep going back because they do this multiple times and they're just constantly setting it off. And I just realized they've just made the most inefficient gun in the world (laughs) is basically what they make here. It's like the most over-engineered gun you've ever seen because they can just set the bullets off one after another after another. I mean, the second they touch wires, bang. This is, this is dope. And Adam I is giddy, it. and I was too. I was watching too. him, like, he's just Come having on. so much fun dancing yeah. around the yeah. shop. No, you do one. No, you do one. Yeah. So cameraman's great. like, <laughs> these are bullets that are going on. All right. Yeah, but do we know where they are? No. No, we can't find them. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. They actually shoot it off 10 times before checking Buster, and sure enough, he's got holes in his pants. They, they, you but know, nowhere else. That yeah. was really confusing to me. Well, I guess it has to do. I mean, they didn't really have at this point um, quite the level of high speed you would have needed to fully capture. Probably right, would have. Right, they had right. some high speed, but it wasn't quite up to that level yet. Mid aughts. So speed. I would imagine it has to do with. I mean, when a bullet is not in a chamber or mm-hmm. not in a, a barrel, rather, when it's not being compressed like that, it doesn't have nearly the same force. So. It'll hurt you, but I imagine it's just not going that far. Sure. I I more meant that I would think the force required to send that sucker through clothing would at least be enough to lodge it in Buster's, like, kind of foamy whatever he's made of. That, you know, the rubber whatever skin that he's got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just weird to me that with every single one of them, it was enough to rip the clothing but not enough to get lodged. I guess one of the things that they mentioned was that the, and they actually showed the the cartridge from the bullet was getting embedded in the rubber format. And Adam mentioned that they're kind of blowing apart. And I wonder if that's dissipating the force or something, you know, because it's just like, again, it's not controlled. So I wonder if it's just not forceful enough. And the floor mat was much closer to where it was getting set off from than Buster was. I don't know, but that's a good point. I, I was surprised that there wasn't, you know, they never found a bullet in him or anything like that. But this is where we get 
maybe my least favorite result that we've seen on the show yet. I don't know why this annoyed me mm-hmm. as much as it did, but mm-hmm. it really did. Because they say this is totally possible, if probably unlikely, but the circuit worked with, you know, Adam even says there's a lot of old trucks driving around. You don't know what, you know, what their wiring is like. Mm-hmm. Totally possible that this could have happened. But because the, I guess they alluded to the fact that because the newspaper story is not true, their official verdict is busted for now. So basically Jada rocket car all Jay, over again. Jamie actually says it's busted for now, but still out there waiting to happen. That means that it's mean? true. Yeah. The, we just proved this thing can happen, but because it ha- because we can't find the evidence for it, it's busted. That's not even at this point what we've seen on the show. That's not the metric they've been using. No. And I also have do we have the plausible yet? Do we have no. it in between? Okay, no, we okay. haven't had any in between. I like kind of specifically because Jamie does say the word plausible. I yeah. was like, oh, is this going to be the first busted? Okay. Well. Yeah. I, this was so weird to me. And again, like you mentioned, it is, it is Jada rocket car. It's that we have no proof it ever really happened. Therefore it's busted. But like, I'm, I'm again in that standpoint, like I was with the biscuit stuff. That's yeah. like, I totally believe this happened because it's so specific Maybe that specific story didn't happen, but like something, there has to be some nugget of truth in this somewhere. And I I just thought that was such a weird way to end it when it worked so well. Yes, but it sounds to me like you're saying that that annoyance rose to the level of not a good myth. No, it's just that. I guess it's like you you said before, what you always remember is the verdict. And it's like, mm-hmm. this was such a great story. And then yeah. for the end, because I, I was ready for the ending to be like, hey, yeah, this could actually happen. We yeah. don't know if it did, but wow, we're really, and because that's the ride I was on. And then yeah. it was not just busted. It was, well, it's busted for now. It was a hard left all of a sudden. Yeah. It was yeah. like, what are you, Nostradamus? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> but like, you're predicting that this is going to happen, but you're still saying it's busted? I'm predicting people on the internet will be upset about this one, so we'll have to revisit it. Some, some nerd on a podcast 20 years from now is going to. God, let's hope not. <laughs> and the, the correct response would have been, what's a podcast? <laughs> yeah, I don't mean to imply that I, I hated this myth because I definitely didn't. I actually liked the myth so much that I think that ending bothered me more than it typically would. And That's especially fair. just the qualifiers they stacked on top of it just didn't make any sense to me. Yeah, I agree. It's possible. Unlikely, but possible. I'd say myth busted for now, but still out there waiting to happen. So back to our rear axle myth. They actually now start testing it. The very first test, the cable snaps on the pole, sends that cable fishtailing and wipes out a high-speed camera. One of the most violent, like, non-explosion things we've seen on the show. Also, I don't know, but I have to imagine at this juncture... Probably not a high speed camera. That was probably the high speed camera. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because also for the rest of the episode, we don't we don't get any more high speed. And not like, just the high speed camera, the high speed camera in that part of the country. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's like the insanely expensive piece of equipment. The one piece of equipment <laughs> that you really don't want to get. No. Get God. And they'd even earlier in the episode had been like, well, this cable is going to go crazy. Let's put a uh, camera right in the way yeah, of that yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The only thing they can say <laughs> is like, uh, at least it wasn't a person. <laughs> it gets even crazier, though, because they're they're on the rooftop so that they can, they can pilot it, which was a great <laughs> shot and also really smart, a smart way to be safe in yeah. this. But when the car keeps going, they lose sight of it, and Jamie stops it. And when they go over, the car... From what they show, the the shot that you can see looks like it's inches, inches. from a telephone pole. Inches. And he just did it blind and yeah. stopped it. Unbelievable. The amount of chaos that <laughs> happened in like 10 seconds that to, to kick this myth off is yeah. just awesome and, and crazy. Jamie was just like, oh, I got it. Don't worry. Yeah, don't worry. I knew that was good. I got I'm it, I'm behind. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they, of course, then they have to do it again. So they, they bind the cable a little bit tighter. Um, because they, they actually find out when they look closer that the cable didn't break, it loosened up. They actually, mm. it came untied from the pole or from the car. One end to the other came untied and that was the problem. So they, Which, when Adam was like putting it on, he's like, hi, it's hooked. Yeah. That, 
I don't know, dog. <laughs> Again, well established. I don't know much about science, but just to look at it, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think that's staying done. I think that it was kind of that's sort of how it looks in the movie too, though. It doesn't look like extremely that's well bound. So maybe that's, that's what they were going for. Yeah. On the second test, though, the cable did snap for real. And they mentioned that the cable had a breaking load of 15,000 pounds. I... So the amount of force that is being you know, distributed there is crazy. And actually the mind, the surprising thing for me, I did not think this was going to work, but I was with Adam when he said that he thought that was probably just going to break the car. Yeah. And the fact that it just snapped that cable and kept going, I really a testament to the way the car is made kind of made me feel kind of like the plane that sort of made me feel better about the car. It's almost like axles aren't supposed to go out. Of, like just be out ripped of out of the yeah, back yeah, of the car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Almost like that. But it's actually that conversation about what's going to happen. Is it going to break the car or not? Mm -hmm. That sets up a famous moment that we have to talk about. Maybe the most, arguably the most famous line, I think, one liner from the show. Mm -hmm. Certainly the most famous one liner we have encountered up to this point. Mm -hmm. Because there's this great moment before the test where Adam is saying, here's my percentages of what I think is going to happen. After the test, a producer asks him about it again, and he starts trying to recall his percentages, but he's getting them wrong, and he's not actually <laughs> saying what he said before, and you can hear the producer off-screen challenge him to be like, that's not what you said. And so they do this great montage, cutting back and forth of Adam basically arguing with himself so until he's finally proven wrong, and he utters the immortal phrase, I reject your reality and substitute my own. Yay! Cha-ching! We got it! What a classic moment on the show. I had forgotten. The thing that makes the line great is right. everything that came before it. Oh, exactly. The editing of yes. that little montage props to our Australian editing friends. Wonderful. They did a wonderful job setting up that line to be as funny as it is. Also, the banter between him and the producer is really funny. Great to hear it. I, like, like She's like, yeah, you said that. Who, me? Y- yes. Yes, you. <laughs> like that. Yes, you. Oh, that was great. Adam Savage has actually, this line is so famous that he has talked about it quite a bit over the years. Uh, and actually, somewhat recently, in the last couple of years, he put up a YouTube video on, on Tested, his YouTube channel, um, really sort of answering the question once and for all of this line and where it came from. Ooh. The line is actually not original to Adam. He did not make that up. It comes from a cult classic movie called Dungeon Master where this line is originally said. And Adam, in this video, Adam says that he first heard the line from another sculptor uh, named Ralph Miller, who he worked with in the 90s. And it was just kind of floating around his head. And when he said it in the episode, he didn't even know if he'd make the edit. You know, <laughs> like it, they, they don't have control over it. The yeah. tapes are going overseas and they're doing it. He didn't know what it was going to be. And it became one of the most famous lines from the show. I think if you were to ask someone... You know, can you tell what me is a that quote from, from Mythbusters? Oh, uh, or, yeah, or here's a famous line. Do you know what it's from? Pe- people know this one, and it really seemed to stick around. That's great when when something is actually, like a quote is actually from something else, but you just know the reference better yeah. than you know the quote itself. Oh, totally. I mean, yeah, th- this, this utterance of that line is far more famous than Dungeon Master. Oh, yeah. No offense to Dungeon Master. Yeah, no offense. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, just a, an iconic moment in the show. And I'm kind of, I'm shocked how many of those lines we've gotten in season one. Yeah. Like we're not even done with the first season and we've had some of the big heavy hitter classic moments already with 13 <laughs> seasons still to go. Like, wow. They, they, it's amazing how fast they got to that. Who knows? Maybe all the magic is in season one. This is where you you alluded to this earlier. We get another one of those great Mythbusters replicating the results kind of moments. And now they actually need to weaken the axle. They bring in a much bigger cable to try to make this happen. And I love this. We talked about the head of the episode. I love the Hollywood technique stuff. Yes. When they start talking about, well, if we had to do this for a movie, here's how we would do it. Or here's how they probably did do it in the movie. Well, that's the thing. Their technique actually still doesn't work, at least not to the degree that you see in the movie. Yeah. And this was interesting. Such a great kind of revelation they had that even with the bigger cable that can take the load and everything else, uh, the cable still snaps 
but it does disable the car. But the axle can't even come off because of the trunk. Yep. Like the, even fundamentally the way that cars are made, this couldn't happen, which was a very conclusive and nice to see result as they, they actually busted this one. It is. I, the one note that I have in this one is that they opted for a vehicle that came out the year of the movie. Okay. But the movie takes place in the 50s. That's a fair point. So if I'm really nitpicking, and the only reason I am is that they got their hands on a jumbo jet. Like, <laughs> like I'm assuming you can probably get. I do wonder if they would have had more luck on a period appropriate vehicle. That's a really good point. I almost wonder if the period appropriate vehicle would have been stronger. Because of the all, you know, all steel construction of old cars. Like old cars are built even more sturdy. You know, they were death traps, but mm. they're built more sturdy from a frame perspective than modern cars. So that would have been interesting. It would have been interesting to see a comparison even between the two or something like that. Yeah. I do respect the hell out of, you know, it took a lot of thought to be like, let's get a cop car from the year of the movie. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You could have just picked a cop car and called it a day. So yeah. I, I do kind of appreciate that they found the period car and then they turned it into a remote car. That's delicious. Myth is busted. You know, it's just not going to happen by itself, not with anything remotely like the circumstances that you saw in the movie. Hollywood myth is busted. And finally, we are back to explosive decompression one last back up, time. Back up to the upper level. We're back. We're back. We're here. We're, we're ready. Back. I'm trying really hard <laughs> to do something with that Inception joke from earlier, and I'm realizing I don't remember a lot about the movie Inception <laughs> besides, like, the turning hallway. <laughs> That's about it. We're going to Joseph Gordon-Levitt this myth yes! now. Yes! Yeah. Ah, that's why he's here. Saving the joke. Something. <laughs> Spinning top? I don't know. No, no. You had it the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I love when they come back to this myth. They just cut straight to their new, they even say their new pyrotechnician, yes. Boyd Lacoste. Yes. What a character. And I noticed that they keep getting new pyrotechnicians. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to be like, what happened to the old one? Oh, life expectancy can't be that long in that line of work. Come on now. <laughs> like. And again, like all the pyro guys are so a little off. Oh, well, a little aloof yes. for guys who blow stuff up for yes. a living. But I guess you you develop that. I guess that comes with the territory of like, yeah, I do this every day. It's I not have a big to deal. imagine. But I do love that they like make him say some lines. Yeah. Did you notice that? Yeah. Like, this is the first time where I felt like they actually scripted something for this dude. Like he like quips to Buster or something, you know. I wanted to believe that was just... That was just our boy. How Boyd. he acts. He's just, he, that's just boy. He's a really bad actor. <laughs> it's, the only, it's the only problem with that theory. <laughs> they get Boyd to actually put an explosive charge on Buster's window to yeah. try to create a much bigger boom and see what's going to happen. And this is where, and I'm kind of surprised it took me this long to have this realization, mm -hmm. but it was when they were talking about the explosive charge that I realized this is this episode came out in 2004. It would have been shot in 2003. Oh, wow. We're not that far removed from 9/11. Ooh. So I'm kind of surprised they did this. That it went forward. But as is. But at the same time, I'm sort of glad that they did because for the reason we talked about oh, earlier of it made me a, feel better about playing. Right. Yeah. It, this was the the peak time of people being worried about flying, yeah. worrying about what was going to happen. Yeah. I feel like this period is one of the reasons, not just you know the movies, obviously, but also this period is one of the reasons that I know this story as well as I do, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And like, so I it was I was of two minds of like, on the one hand, it was really weird to see them at this time putting a giant explosive in an airplane because of everything that was, yeah. you know, no pun intended, in the air at the time. Aww. But 
it was also kind of a good thing. Like yeah. it, I, I thought it was actually a little bit of a public service to, to let people know, no, these things are really safe and probably safer than you, you think. It was, it was interesting. It was weird. I don't really know how to feel about it. Yeah. I, 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 I did like that. I did like how pumped that guy seemed to be to, oh. to be blowing up a plane. Like, Finally, they lift the moratorium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now we can get back to real business. Well, I mean, it, it was, I mean, you're just giving a pyro like a giant play set of you're right. stuff to you're blow right. up. I yeah. mean, yeah. Um, he's going to be stoked. Oh, that guy? Yeah, he likes blowing stuff up. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. He's, well, he's real way good at into it. it. Oh, he's way into it. The the first test that they do with the explosives, it's a, it's a they I mean, small explosive feels like a a strange phrase, but it is a smaller (laughs) explosive than what they ultimately do. Yes. And when they first did this, I don't know about you, they blow the window out and it's Mm -hmm. pretty much just blowing the window out of the plane and you see stuff go flying. They put packing peanuts down, which was smart. Yeah. And you see everything go flying. But my first reaction from the footage was, oh, like it still wasn't as bad as I expected. And then they go in and actually look at Buster. Yeah. That he was like pulled almost through the window. And they mentioned that like if it had been a human, they probably would have lost an arm yeah. from this decompression. That was intense. That was disconcerting to yeah. say the least. Yeah. I was I was very taken aback by it. Because it, like I said, the first shot, I was like, oh, that's not that bad. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> kind of. Beside the point, did you notice they gave Buster a fanny pack? Did they? Yeah, I liked that. Oh, man. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why they did this. Because 2004? Well, prime year for fanny packs 2004, prime year. What do you think Buster keeps in his fanny pack? Uh, A second life. <laughs> Probably. He needs it. Yeah. I like to think it keeps the stickers that go on crash test dummies, like on their heads and everything. Uh, he just has those. He puts them on when he needs them. Or you know? spare parts. That'd be kind of funny. Like, oh, oh missing a finger. <laughs> Let me just go on here real quick. And uh, bolts and washers. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his like granola. You yeah. Know? Like, it's, just, I'll no, keep it with me no, just in no, case. Just in case I need a little snack. <laughs> then it is finally time to go for the big boom. And this time they use, they say that Boyd has explosives left over yeah and it is a hundred grain shape charge which just looks like a firework from hell it does it is a this it's octagonal and yeah like really kind of it just looks like it's up to no good like exactly. i don't know how else to describe it that it just looks problematic yeah <laughs> like, it looks bad from the second you see it yeah and it's justified because they even mentioned that the explosion is bigger than they expect and oh my God, this is by far the biggest explosion we've seen so far on the show. And they blow a huge hole in the side of this plane. They blow the literal roof off the place. Yes. The to, roof to of the, the airplane. To the point that it is no longer, they just put the explosive in, in explosive decompression. Like the air pressure differential matters not at this point. No, I, it also, uh, right, exactly. Like that's another, I was thinking that even with the first one where I'm like, I mean, you did blowed up a guy, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, he's blowed yeah. up. He, yeah. He's uh, like, they're like, oh, well, you might lose an arm. He's dead. He doesn't need it. Yeah. <laughs> like, What's he going to do with it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, gr- the high speed shot is amazing. Mm. And it's, you know, the, the explosions on the show keep getting bigger and bigger as it goes on. And, and we've talked about this before. But they still have a kind of laissez-faire attitude with mm-hmm. the way they set these things up that makes it feel way more dangerous. Yeah. So when you see it and then they're like, oh, they're, <laughs> you think Jamie is like hiding behind uh, like the wing of another plane? Yeah. That's his blast shield. He's yeah. like, oh, shoot, that really, mm-hmm. that really went. That was a big boy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was a big one. Uh. And amazingly, Buster survives for a crash test dummy if survives. If you could call it that, yeah. He's all piled up with the chairs and everything on. I love the shot where it's like a crew member or producer is like, Buster's still around. <laughs> there he is. They were yeah. certain that they had just turned him into smithereens and this was the end of Buster. But Not yet. He's still hanging out. He's still hanging out. It literally, this time of, <laughs> yeah. of, the, yeah. of the aircraft. But uh, he's there. And they do use this, like we said, they use this to 
talk about how safe planes really are and yes. that they show that there have been actual explosive decompressions for various reasons. But again, they come back to right where we started with, but it's not like you see in the movies. It's not like what you think. Planes are actually much safer. And it's it, not like Goldfinger flying around the cabin and then going out the teeny hole. And particularly for the time, really good message to have to have out there. And I, like you said, I left this one feeling, oh wow, I, I feel much better about this than I than I thought I would. Now that I'm thinking about it, what effect do you think the rise of space travel had with that becoming? so prominent like the alien scene like blow it out the airlock that is kind exactly of thing? what i'm thinking yeah, yeah that they yeah. were just like that's such a cool visual not that alien was like the very first to do it sure but i mean like even like something like 2001 has has a scene like that that they just decided oh well you know what else is 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 flying and, and de- depressurized is that yeah that airplane i think it's all kind of of a piece because like you know at the same time that sci-fi movies and stuff are doing that air travel is becoming much more common mm. it's becoming much cheaper so more yeah. people are doing it so more people have an awareness of it and yeah. it's kind of like a great you know make something terrifying out of something you know and it's even scarier because it seems possible you know and and it no joke it is terrifying to 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 see what what can happen but yeah really really good verdict on this one the, i think i think this one and the and the rear axle myth, the the verdicts feel so complete. Yeah, that is probably the reason that I had the response I did to the frog gigging one, yeah, where yeah, it's yeah. just like w- comparatively, I don't even know what this means, and it's yeah. in the middle of stuff that makes so much sense that it yeah. makes this stand out as, as being so frustrating. But all in all, a really great episode of the show. I was over three on on this episode on the results yeah i guessed none of them yeah i was like absolutely you can get sucked out because why would it be in everything if if it wasn't even plausible right i did not think you would be able to shoot a bullet out of a out of a car yeah i just i was like nah not at all which again they said busted but like the point is that I didn't think that it would be able to fire at all. Yeah. And it did consistently <laughs> and many, many times over. Uh, yeah. I guess I just don't know science. <laughs> we'll talk about what PSI is after the show goes <laughs> off. We'll, Thank you. I've been keeping it to myself this whole episode. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode and you'll come back and join us next week. We're in for a legendary episode next Ooh. week. Season one, episode 13. The myths are chicken gun this is the infamous chicken cannon episode (laughs) the other two myths are octopus pregnancy Uh uh-oh i hate that go on (laughs) and killer washing machine i remember three for three i remember all three of these and they are in my memory pretty iconic especially the chicken gun i think we're in for a great one and we hope that you guys will watch the episode and come back to talk uh or at least hear us talk about it you can talk <laughs> at your phone if you want to yeah uh, but hear us talk about it next week bye bubbies Try This at Home is produced by Slugline Media. The show was written, hosted, edited, and shot onto the internet by Cliff Bumgardner and Harrison Stewart. Our music is by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. You can follow the show on Instagram at trythispod or email us, trythisathomepod at gmail.com. Thank you.